City Gates Christian Center podcast, bringing a message of hope to the lonely, broken, and wounded. Very excited for this morning. Come on, let's be praying as we start. Father, we thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. Indeed, when we look to you, we don't lack anything. Today, may your word not just inspire us, but transform us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to welcome you to City Gates, all our guests. Karong kabuntago, napapaka na itong mga guests. Mga VIPs. Amen. We've been declaring that uh, 2017 is going to be miraculous. And uh, amazing is, amazing thing is our path towards the miraculous starts the moment we believe. Your miraculous will not start tomorrow or when you have money. It did start, it did get started the other day or the other week and then you missed, you missed it. Your path towards the miraculous is not when you graduate college, it's not when you found that special someone. Your path towards the miraculous starts the moment you believe. And so it can start today, it can start tomorrow. And you nurture that faith so that it comes to life. It keeps growing. Keep your faith growing. I'm actually very elated and thankful um, when before we started that uh, Brother Fidel shared his awesome testimony, a miraculous testimony. Now to papakanagin sa life ni Kuya Fidel. Uh, we might get to share that one day, and uh, it's amazing because he's assigned sa Luzon, he's with his heart's desire na ma-assign sa Cebu now. He has the go signal na na siya sa Cebu. God is, well, that's a miraculous request. Why? Because the family is here. And so to be with family is miraculous. We, we can escape all this spiritual death, this rat race, we can escape, you know, physical ailments and even emotional hurts when we trust in God. Because He's a miraculous God. And so, you know, we continue our journey. And next week, say next week, we start a new series, Love Series. Every man and woman's journey towards finding their true love. Amen. He's excited, love of history. So it's gonna be a journey towards finding true love. Whether you're single, married, nasaktan, nagmahal, nag church, okay? Whether umibig, umiibig, iibig, you know, from whatever context, in whatever context you are in, you know, it's for you. You know what about it's for you. Amen. It's for every one of us. So, I want to challenge everyone. Invite your friends. We have been praying. Three friends, no? When we got started two weeks ago, we said, let's pray for our friends so that they can respond. This is going to be a relevant message for our generation. Para para generation it's very important for us to grab this opportunity so that people can also connect obviously to their uh, to, to the one who loved us the most, who loves us the most and that is God as well as we're going to talk about principles of marriage principles of relationships boy girl relationship and all these things amen all right today I want to tell you and share with you the great things start from small beginnings. In Zechariah chapter 4 verse 10, the Bible said, Do not despise these small beginnings. Wag mong ismulin. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. God is excited. He has started a work in you and He will finish it. He will complete it. You will not die, okay, incomplete. In schools, it's usually finished or unfinished, pass your papers. 
But with God, He will make sure when He you get started, you get finished. The work in you will be finished. You'll be done. And at the end of it, it'll be a great work. It'll be a magnificent handiwork of God. And so, see, do not despise small beginnings. Ginagmay ng mga butang. Wapo ko nakita na pulling o refrigerator. Na pulling o bulldozer. Usually, these are small things. A significant change can be caused by something small. It is those tiny things that can irritate. A pulling. It's the tipping point is caused by just a little bit of addition. And so you're feeling right now, you know, you're hopeless. You're feeling like your life is not, not going anywhere. But just a little bit more. Maybe one more day or one more week or one more year. Or just a little bit more patience. And then breakthrough can come. It's the little addition that makes the difference. You see, we serve a great God. And He can make our lives great. He is miraculous. He's awesome. And He specializes in turning nothing into something, and no one into someone, and nobody into somebody. An ordinary into an extraordinary. That is our God. See, some things can contribute, little things can contribute to great things. An employer, an employer, what can you contribute to our company? Ikan ang tao na ang apply siya. Aw, natin niya po tansin. Hindi mo tapad natin niya po tansin. Ikan ang amo, ikan ang amo sa security guard. Ah, dong, naik kopi oh. Ia sama. Adik lakukan nama, kerana dia buka tunduk. Ini untuk berdoting lagi ke kalung ini. Amen. You see, little things. It is the little addition. It is the tiny bit, a little bit more. And so you cannot despise. Even your situation right now that may seem weak, may seem sad, may seem insignificant. You may look at yourself and you think, I'm a nobody. You may look at your scholastic records and all these things and you say, what, can, what impact can I possibly make? Well, your story shows the small efforts, small gesture, little acts can mean a lot. Amen. In John chapter 6, we read from verse 1 to 14. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon, <coughs> Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. And so, turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, Lord, even if we worked for months, we would not have enough money to feed them. Well, can you imagine? A lot of people are clamoring for miracles, are following Jesus. And Jesus being, you know, having felt and ha having compassion towards these people. They're just like us. There's just, they're just like, you know, every person on earth hungry for something that only God can offer. And so, maybe we're one of those. I believe at some point in our lives, that we are coming to God and say, Lord, we want to see your miracles. 
Lord, we want to experience greatness. Lord, at least naman lang, mausap ang timplada sa akong kinabuhi. Lord, I want to actually do something that can make me feel important. And so, we're running life without purpose. And these are people following Jesus for a glimpse, for just a touch, because they have seen His miracles. This morning, I want to tell you, as you know, God can tell you in many, many ways, He is powerful. But unless that becomes our experience, then we will always desire for it. We will always long for it. And we will be searching those things sa lahit ng mga buta. But Jesus is the one whom we need to follow. And so, here was actually an opportunity. Jesus seeing the need. How many here na ipagkakla nun? God sees your need. God knows your need. Kapag ang ginoy, exactly, gusto yung kikinahaklan. So, seeing that need, He then motioned to Philip. He said, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? And amazingly, Philip's response was a bit negative. He said, Lord, even if we worked for months, we would not have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Have you been in that situation? You feel it's not enough? Amen? What good is it? Have you been in a situation, you like someone, and then they say, Ay kuya, it's not good enough. Diba? And uh, you're in a situation where you're lo longing for something, you know, more than what you are getting. It's not enough. And so we become negative, we are discouraged. And it's just like, you know, when somebody tries to bring out a solution, Say, it's not enough. When we are discouraged, usually we don't get to listen and hear wisdom from the Lord. When we read our Bibles, we don't get to revelations. And uh, Simon, or rather Andrew, was saying, well, there are five barley loaves, and okay stuff, but what good is that? There's a huge need. What good is a little money? But ako ay mong bayronan. What good is a little of this and that, but it's just not enough. We live in a world we're in. It makes us feel that we're insignificant. We're living in a world where it's a rat race. It's a, it's a survival of the fittest. It's a survival of the strong, whether, you know, when you're, when you're weak, that's why we have to somehow put up a face, a facade, and we try to pretend that we're okay, but we're not. On the inside we're all crying, but we have to smile. And most times we live that. But I want to tell you, God wants you to believe that there is greatness in you, despite the little amount that you have. And here, you know what? Jesus intervened in verse 10. As Andrew, as Philip, and the other disciples had already gave up. Jesus said, tell everyone to sit down. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish. And they all ate as much as they wanted. How can 5,000 men, not counting the women, not counting the children, how can five loaves of barley bread and two fish ever be enough if it had not been for the miraculous God? Amen. Our God is a miraculous God. And here we can find principles for greatness. Principles that God has given us 
so that despite the insignificance that we are feeling, despite the weakness, we can know without a shadow of a doubt that we can make a difference. We can make an impact. That despite the, the, the struggle of our nation, despite the struggles of our family, despite the struggles in the school, we can make a difference. Here is a story of a little boy bringing something of no value in comparison to the multitudes of no value in comparison to the need around them but what little you put in the hands of Jesus he can multiply it and so believe that this morning whatever it is that you surrender to him he can multiply it he can do something with your life they ate as much as they wanted after everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled twelve baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. Ang atong kinabuhi niya si Kino will always go upward. It's always upward. It always winds upward. There's always promotion. It's always greatness. He makes sure that in His time, everything is beautiful. God makes sure that in His time, miraculous things can flow sa atong kinabuhi. Then we ask, what significance is there in having something small? I don't have enough money. I'm not gifted. I'm not talented enough. I'm not well educated. Pangutana lang mo ana or nakahistorya lang mo ni ana. I'm not good looking. I'm not beautiful enough. Napa kuy buhok mo murag alambre. Ang mga kulot nagpa street. Ang mga street nagpa kulot. Ipe na ang mga to nga puro subo bugas kacawan patag ingon patag. Pasuhin na lang ngayon mong naon para pasuhin na lang itong balan. Mawala ang bugas. And so we were living in a, in a context, in a world where there's, there's so much struggle to put the best foot forward, to look good. In this generation of beauty enhancements. Apay, Miss Universe, karong lumis. Oh, kinood ba na ang uh, holiday na ba? Dili. Mayra. This uh, world of beauty pageants, the quest for Miss Universe, is very easy to be insecure. And so I took a glimpse at uh, the, the preparations of Miss Universe, and actually they were trained to do their opening spiel. Obviously, they would walk down the aisle and they would introduce themselves. And so I got a, some of their script and a uh, May allow, allow me to share some of them. From the land of no wrong, Czech Republic. From the land of Ami, Austria. 77, 78, 79, Haiti. Ulihin, wag pakawan, Italy. Wala sa akin, wala sa iyo, nasaan? Nasa Kenya! Bip, 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 ang sabi ng jeep, Iji! Hirap na hirap na ako, the struggle, Israel! I did not walk, I did not crawl, I ran! And lastly, from the land of sausages, meatloaf, and corn beef, Argentina! Amen. It's just, you know, the struggle can be Israel. Struggle to see. If you are feeling insecure, feeling inadequate, not having enough, or 
you're feeling insignificant, this morning together let us discover God's principles for greatness. Amen? God's principles for greatness. Jesus turning to Philip, he used to Jesus, where? Say with me, where? Hasa. Hasa mantamangita. Where? That is our question. Where can I find money for tuition? Where can I find enough for their daily needs? Where can I, you know, get this? We live in a world and we are experiencing a lot of times lack emotionally and again physically. We look at ourselves and in comparison to other people, we insecure lagi ta. And so where Jesus was asking Philip, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? And he says there, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful story that God has given us a glimpse of his thoughts. He said he was testing Philip for he already knew what he was going to do. In our difficulties, in our insecurities, God has the solution. And so, the first principle for greatness is that we need to recognize the source. God is the source. Amen. We can never reach a place of more than enough without God. Jesus, knowing the multitudes, knowing the vast number of people, 5,000 men, not counting women and children, He knew exactly that there is not enough. No. There's not enough bakeries out there in the wilderness. Walay Arby's, walay Julie's, walay Mang Tinapay, or sa ba na? Mang Tino, ang sa na? There's not enough. As a matter of fact, there's none. There's just none out there in the wilderness. And so many of us, we try to force the issue. We try to look within our personal means. And because we're not recognizing the source. If you want to experience greatness, you need to look at the source. God is the source. That's why last week we talked about loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Loving God with everything you have got. Because when everything that we have got is surrendered to God, He can do something with it. He can do something with your life. It's not your mind. It's not your strength. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we would not have enough money to feed them. That is exactly our situation. That is exactly your situation. We've been working so hard, it's just not enough. And the cruelty of it all is we know even if we work harder, it's still not enough. That's why if you want to experience greatness in your life, you have to recognize the source. You can never be happy enough with more activities and more outings and all this entertainment. You will never be healthier or will never be fittier just by all these things because we have no control over the situations. We can never be joyful or happier enough when we meet this someone or that person. Because at the end of the day, you'll be betrayed, you'll be hurt. If it is not from God, it is always short change of anything extraordinary. If it's not of God, you'll always fall short of the miraculous. If it is not from God, it's, it's going to be substandard. It's never gonna be fulfilling. It's never gonna be enough. Don't push it. Let's not push the issue. We cannot survive without God. Try as you may. Sulay lang. 
Suaya ni mana? Suaya ni mana? But without God, without recognizing the source, it's still empty. It's still a struggle. It's still something that does not satisfy. Because we have to recognize the source. It is not religion. What brings inner peace is not when you know when you're so secluded and there's no problem. Even in a world without problems, there will still be emptiness, and your problem will be loneliness. So we need God. Start. It's it's high time to recognize that. And I do understand. We are overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed. A lot of situations that I face on a daily basis. There's a lot of situations that I'm looking in the future, present. There's a lot of situations I'm looking at other people. And I, I've, I've come to my knees and, and when I'm preparing things, what to say and what to do, I'm always understanding, I'm always realizing my strength is not enough. My knowledge is not enough. My wisdom is not enough. I need to tap to a greater source. As a matter of fact, the greatest source in the whole of the universe. And that is God. You cannot underestimate the power of God. It becomes a cliche. It becomes something that we said. Without God, you know, you cannot do anything. All things are possible with God. You can say that God is miraculous, but until you experience His miraculous power, it won't mean anything to you. Philip, His disciples, they have been with Jesus. They have been, they've been living with Him. They've been seeing His miracles. But still, when He was crucified, they deserted Him. It's because they haven't experienced Him on a personal basis. You may be, you know, from the day you were born, taman karon, pwede kang nagsimbahan. But until you experience God as your source, it will always be not enough. Every season of insecurity is a test of faith to trust in God or in our own strength. Every season of insecurity, having not enough, poses a great opportunity for insecurity. When you don't have enough money, you don't want to go out. Diba simple lang, makatimbol na niya o sa gilong kamatis. Makayabot ang money na maligya. When you don't have money, you don't want to go out with friends because, you know, basig na yung mga amutan. When you don't have the right clothes, when you don't have your dress in a certain manner, you're just in the shabby clothes and that you are insecure. But it is a test of faith whether you trust in God's strength or in our own strength. How many of you believe that you can be great? That greatness requires huge resources that personal might is not enough. When you try to dream, big dreams for the Lord, it's going to take huge resources that your personal might is not enough. Feeding multitudes of people, feeding these 5,000 men and children and their wives, feeding them requires a huge amount of money. God knows you cannot fund God's vision. You cannot fund personally. The dreams that He has placed in your heart, if your dream is affordable, it is disposable. Don't hold on to these dreams that you can afford. Hold on to God's dreams wherein you are forced to trust in His resources, wherein you are forced to lean on Him. Ano man, why are we disappointed? Why are we always feeling that we're lacking something? Because we are made for greatness. We don't, normally, we don't want to settle. Normally, our, 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 our sight is set on greater and farther things ahead of us. But most of the time, our wings are clipped because of our experiences, because of our failures. But in any day, in ordinary basis, when a child is born, it's, it's there's that in name, there's that nature of a dreamer. 
wherein kung tano na yung bata, an innocent child, gusto siya may presidente sa Pilipinas. Gusto siya makatog London. Gusto siya mag-imbinto mga sakyanan na maglupad. Gusto siya makaimbinto scanner na makadiscern sa dangers and so And those are my kids' dreams. And because they've not failed before, inside of us, there's, that, there's just greatness. We wanna, you know, dream big dreams. Natin mga pangandoy si kinabuhi. But if we're looking at our own resources, we will be disappointed. Philip, where can we buy? Jesus said, Philip, where can we buy? Philip could have said, Lord, we don't know, but you know. When God asks you a question, when you are posed with a, with a situation, you need something. God is saying, so what are you going to do? You just tell him, Lord, you know. I'm but a mortal. You are immortal. You are the source. The moment you recognize that He is the source, is the very moment that you will experience the miraculous. If your dream is affordable, it's disposable. Dream without limits, for God knows no limits. Don't put a limitation to a limitless God. Amen. Tignan mo tapad, recognize the source. Secondly, as so there was Andrew, he stepped into the sea. Philip, wrong answer. And so, Andrew stepped into the sea. Supposedly, you know, presenting a situation. And he said, there's a young boy with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is it with this huge crowd? What good is it? You see, when we look to ourselves and not to God, we develop arguments. The second principle is that we need to reject the arguments. Yes, it's a given. Na na na. What are what are common arguments? That I'm poor. I'm not a good speaker. I'm not good looking. I'm not tall enough. I'm not clever enough. I'm not professional. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm dumb. All these arguments takes place when we look so much to ourselves and not on God. Ay palabig saling sa imo ang kaugalingon. Hindi magjan na siya enough. At the moment, mabati ita nga kulangan, don't develop these arguments. Don't settle. Do not shortchange your dreams. When you can't afford your dreams, it's not because you can't make it. It's because you need God's strength. And so never develop an argument Never develop in your mind the thinking that my family is just too hard. That I'm not gonna be someone or something. I'm not gonna afford that thing. I'm not gonna be the someone that I have been dreaming of my life. We have to destroy, we have to reject the arguments. Reject the arguments. Amen. We need to start renewing our minds. We need to start loving the Lord with our heart with our soul, with our mind, with our strength. Believe that greatness is in you because God is in you. How many of you are still believing for your miraculous 2017? You still have those miraculous requests? Never throw them out, especially when you're going through something bad. Never throw them out, especially when you are discouraged. Keep them in your heart. And whatever argument comes your way, fix your eyes on Jesus. Ingo si Andrew, Nay, dool no ta siya. He could have said, Lord, Andrew could have said, Lord, here's five loaves of bread. Lord, you can make, you can multiply this. Because you are powerful. He could have said that. But he said, there's five loaves of bread. There's two fish. 
What God is done to these multitudes? It's a great insult. It's very simple. It's very easy to be insecure. And we think it's okay. And we think God owes us something. And we think, you know, it's unfair of God that He places you in a situation, in a situation, where as a matter of fact, it's never God's fault. It's always because of our inability to trust and believe Him. As I've said, never be excited. Just believe. Excitement can only bring you somewhere at some point. Faith will take you to the miraculous. You can be very excited in doing something, but you will lose fuel when you encounter problems. See, my task is not to, it's not just to, to inspire. My task is not just to entertain. My task is so that we can come to God and be empowered, that our faith is built up. Amen. And so we need to work these things out sa toang mga kinabuhin. And so reject the arguments. These arguments only takes place the moment we look so much at ourselves and not on God. Amen. How many of you around atong mga cell groups atong identify kung sa maning mga arguments you're looking at yourself, you have five loaves and two fish, but you're overwhelmed by the size of the problem of the situation. I want you to look to God. Recognize that He's the source, that He can make you great. He's a powerful principle for greatness. Recognize that the dreams that He has placed in your life can happen when you connect to Him. Unless, gamay mong damgo, pwede na nani mo trabaho, ikaw lang. Pero dako yung mong damgo. How many of you are dreaming that your family is going to be prospered, be so prosperous that you'll be a blessing? As in, uh, this week, I was in Iligan with my lovely wife. And we were there one day earlier than the scheduled mentoring. So we, a, we are scheduled to have a mentoring Wednesday, the whole day, and then the following day we travel to uh, Osamis, the whole day, and the Friday we left for Cebu. But we were there, there a bit, uh, one day earlier, and so I was there, I was able to look at the situation sa mga malay, na kapilang, kapila na muagi katalagman, na sunog, na bahaan, Okay? Nabahaan o nabahaan. Katulo na. So when our house got burnt down some five years, exactly five years ago, as I said, I shared sa inyo, I sat on the second, somewhat, sa naugdaw ng balay sa second floor. I was standing there and I was praying over that piece of land. I said, Lord, we're gonna build something here. And I cannot do this. I'm struggling here and there. I don't have the resources to build this, Lord. But I said, Lord, this will be built. Lo and behold, the moment you declare something for the Lord, you'll be faced with a greater problem. I realize, dili patukuran sa tagiya sa yuta. We're only renting. And dili patukuran unless we buy the land. And I said, God, you are our source. You are our source. And so I only have a few, few pesos. Friends have contributed, have given, and so they were able to gather this much. And then have money. Or one fourth sa ipangayo or something. Kung palito ng yuta, we would not be able to build something, a shack or whatever para sa balay. And so I negotiated with the owner. I told him, you know, um, this is what I do. And, uh, I, I did not beg. I said, I didn't ask for it for free. I said, I will pay this land. But for the moment, this is what I've got. And I showed him. I told him. Because I said, Bayaran taka. Di lang sarun. Bayaran taka. Bayaran taka. Cheque. 
for five years. Sabi. Ito uroon po siya. Sa tagahan siya ang postdated checks kada bulan for five years. I gave it to him. And every month, been paying that house, paying that lot, paying that lot. And just December last year, 2016, bayad na siya. Amen. Nabagpaka na ginawa na kamay po. It's a testimony. It's just that I was recognizing God's source. I was there, so with that, natukod kamay ang balay, natukod, na ninihinay, kay ginasunog. Oh, niabot ng sindong. Nagabot sa sindong, sa sunog, ang ako ang ihatag sa mga mga oven. Na mga rin yung taon to yung pinakapalangga, oven, o yan ako, sheriff. Pero ang oven, ako ihatag to sa yan. Ngayon ako man, ay oven, ay limpay kayo siya. Ngayon ay kung ma, mag-minyo na ito ko. Hawag, yun ko niya yung paminaw, limpay kayo sa oven. Mara to yung ticket. Pero nasunog. Pagabot sa sin, pagabot, nasunog, natukod na mo. Ang kumanghod na po, di palit, o ref, yung siya ma, na i-ref, di pa'y kay kumama, yung yun yung kumanghod ma, huwag minyo na kayo. Huwag yan po niya paminawa, huwag so, di pa'y kay siya. Ano na yung strategy? And so, na, wash out sa sendong. And so, again, by the grace of God, because He is our source. Kaso na po, tangan na po na mong balik sa iyan. O, when we're getting down, no, gano. O, ang ref. And then, He called me the other week katong pagbagyo or low pressure sa kagayan o sa ilikan and grabe when I called her she said tol grabe na ang tubig tagaliho kung magbali na ito tagaliho na actually tagahawak sa gawas pero sa balay tagatuhod and so aswat nila tanan mga gamit and the ref was di naman maaswat sa lamang sa ginoon, i-function ng Yapon. But the point I'm trying to make is when I was there, you know, every tragedy just, you know, it just offers greater opportunity for improvement. Pag abot sa baha, nalimpyo ang matay. Kaya ano nga, nagaglapok mag sugil, limpyuhan ang patir na kahog noon, nagigan ba sa sunog, na huwag din na mo gilaptan. Natumpak. So, itukuran ng bagong pader, great renovation. Amen. And I insist that, uh, and I'm there, you know, people will look, ano na, na si Banto, na si Banto. Maglakaw ko dito, magpragikin sa mga milyonaryo, ilang nakita. The, the feeling is something amazing because they're looking at you, not And in, in your in your mind, sir man in town ko, sir man kung gidala kami dary. Wala jud. It was my faith. It was my brother and I, and just you know doing little stuff. And my mom said during my birthday at December, sa may mga gusto man siya. Di ko sa nina, di ko kasunis. Tiles lagi dito, tiles lagi. Pa tiles lagi daw niya ba? Kumabot ito tiyan. Para mag-dentist nga na yung nagpaibot o hipon. Hibot na rin. Ingo na pasinti nga. Dok, di mo na diri. Naman diri. Ay ka bala ka mukabot rata niya. Ignay mo dapat mukabot rata niya. Ang alam ko na ito mukabot rata niya. But we just have to recognize the source. We have to reject the arguments and then lastly, hang on to Jesus, alright? Tell everyone to sit down. In other words, kalma lang. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God. In our weakness, in our failures, we have to calm down. We have to learn to give thanks to the Lord. And that's when God was able to, with the little, distribute them to the people. Limara ka mo? Distribute. And disciples were looking at him and saying, Wana, masyala na ni. 
But as he was distributing them, being faithful with the little, how many of you believe that when you respect the process, there's that word again, you respect the process. You're just being, thank you Lord, for the little that I have. The more we give, the more we share, the more we believe, we're looking at these resources and look down mo sa isla, gamay na makaini, but continue, continue. Work your, work, work out sa imong emotion, work out imong mind. Dapat nakafocus kaya sa gino. Si God wants you to be, experience greatness. But you have to recognize that He's the source. You have to reject the arguments, respect the process. the church, ako takakbo. We're aiming for a we're aiming for a building, we're aiming for, you know, a facility where our kids can, can play, where our kids can go, where our community, where we're aiming for the promotion of people, we're aiming for national transformation. Nakunas yan. When I was asked, my birthday last December, I was asked, Pastor, what's that mga nanggo? Sa may muhang birthday wish. I looked at each one of them and I said, my wish, ikaw, matromon sa mong trabaho, pastar ka, ikaw, minyo, ta ka, kaduhin ka, birthday wish, imuta mo minyo at kanimong tapat. Ano ka sila, isa ang saong sikat, isa ang saong tulot. Gabi ko nila kalab si Lord. Amen. So, say my birthday wish. My birthday wish. Na itang tanan. Together, we can experience the supernatural God. We can experience the miraculous God. My prayer as a pastor is that every one of you can recognize karang pangita basta-bas sa mga handog, mga problema, mga arguments, itang tanan. My heart would ache as a pastor, my heart would ache when I hear of someone, this person or that person, and then uh, falling uh, beneath the arguments that I'm going to go through. Now, my mga arguments, problems will always be there. Problems will always be there because God is always there to solve and you can always lean on God. Amen? I want us to dream. In the next Four years in 2020. You see, it's not just you. I can't believe there's multitudes. How many are we? 280, 300? Morning and evening and manas cells. But yet, we have needs. Why are we here every Sunday? Because we want to worship the Lord. Because we love God. We give back to God what belongs to Him. We become responsible in these areas. But we are also here because we want to hear from God. We're here because God uses our pastor to share a message. We're here because we're a community. And we're just, we're not just on Sunday. We're on our cell groups. We're there. We're in eyeball to eyeball. We meet with people. And, and we don't like this one and that one until we adjust. And so we're no longer friends. We become family. And we're, we're, as we are respecting that, that we're checking out on each other, a check out on mga arguments, mga sa iba pong nauna, kumaluya ka, na yung makapig-pig sa tuwa. That is what church is all about. But don't allow this privilege na ikaw lang ang maka-experience. That is why we invite people. That's why we say, hey, would you come along? And then God has given us opportunities upon opportunities. And as I've said, February is a great opportunity that we can bring our friends. We're gonna, you know, attack you sa itong mga invitations. But this morning, I wanna focus the ministry to us about this message. Why don't we stand to our feet and we say, God, we recognize your source. As we worship, come on, let's worship you.
worship you, Lord. Come and worship Him. Let's worship Him. Let's lift up our praises. The God who is the source of every good gift. Worship you. so you can run to him 
so you will be saved. And know that though your part is small, you can do something. Just hang it there. And you can give him your two fish and your five loaves of bread or whatever little that you have. Know that when you offer him even the little that you have, yes, that means trusting him. That means surrendering. That means respecting the process. That means waiting. That means not being bitter and discouraged. That though you don't understand, God knows. See, David respected the process before he fought Goliath. He fought the lion and the bears. You, you have to fight your lions and your bears have to win them those battles you're overwhelmed with big things God is stretching you right now these farmers they respect the process they till the soil they remove the stone it's hard work they plant the seed respect the process the miraculous will come athletes they respect the process they train hard so that one day when they stand in that ring, they can last another round and another round. And they'll be the last man standing. And they'll be experience victory, greatness. Students have to study hard and to respect the process. Because when you rush something, its result is a disaster. Father, I pray for greatness sa Matagusa, greatness in each one of these, your dear people, be unleashed, be realized, as we recognize you are our source, as we reject and remove all the arguments in our hearts and our minds, and as we respect the process, we trust that you will do the miraculous in our lives. And Lord, thank you for next week, thank you for uh, the series where you you're going to speak to us, so we're going to journey into your love and a journey towards meaningful relationships. And we journey towards significance and uh, that our strength be in you, that our joy be in you. Salamat, you know, on every single day of our lives, we rejoice and we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, listening to City Gaze Christian Center podcast. For more updates, like our page on Facebook at City Gaze Christian Center or visit us at citygatescebu.org.